Okay, so um, this is just going to be a quick video about torque. Um, before you, uh, before we uh, start though, uh, I need you to do something for me. If you could just pause the video for a second, then run over and uh, get to your nearest door, um, nearest door you can find. I want you to do something. I want you to try to open it by pulling on or pushing on the handle right where the handle is. Then try to try to basically move it uh, by just pushing on the close as close as you can to the hinges, as close as you can to where the thing rotates. And notice the difference in how much force you have to create to um to to actually make it move. Uh, so go ahead, um, and then uh, come on back. Okay. So what did you notice? Um, what you probably noticed, or hopefully what you noticed, is that if you have a door, let's say it's swinging around this point right here. Okay. Is that if you push on this side? So normally, normally our our door handles are here. All right, we'll put our door handles right near the edge. If you push on this door handle here, you apply some force here, um, the thing moves pretty easily, right? Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of force. You know, we generally can operate doors. Um, my children can operate most of our doors, or basically all of our doors. Um, it's all good. So, but if you actually try to push from the inside, all right, if you try to push from, from let's say right there, it's much, much harder to move the door. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, especially if it's a door that has a spring or something on it, that you're just not going to be able to move it at all. Um, and so it's, it's obvious that the, um, the thing that determines how easy, for instance, it, it is to, to move a door or to swing a door is not the force. Uh, because, you know, you can apply the force to either part of this uh, and, we, and we get the, um, you know, we basically don't get the same answer. We don't get the same amount of ease with which we can um, we can move the door, and that's because the important thing in this case uh, for um, uh, for moving the door is something called torque. All right, so that's which is what, as you may have noticed, our entire uh, lecture is on. Okay, so torque it turns out is important for anything that's move or anything that's uh, that we're trying to rotate. And when I say we're rotating here, basically, if you think about a door, think about it kind of how I have it drawn here, where it could kind of, where there's no wall and it kind of rotate forever. Think about what you're trying to do is you're trying to basically rotate it. Uh, it's not a very good circle, but um, I don't really have enough room. But you know, if you were to keep pushing it, it would kind of rotate around and eventually come kind of back around this way, and you know, it would come around that way. And it's basically just one big circle that the door could make uh, if you just kind of push it around. And so what you're doing when you're doing with a door is you're basically rotating. It's just you're only rotating over part of a circle. So anytime you're trying to rotate something, it turns out that torque is the important component. And torque has a very simple, um, uh, simple thing. It's, it's related to the force, but it's also related to how far away from the center, all right, the, basically the point of rotation you are. Um, and so it has a form that looks like this, which is that torque is equal to force times r, where r is just the distance. Um, so if I call this force one and force two, r one is just the distance from the center to where you're pushing. So for instance, in this case, this is r two, that's r one. It's just the distance basically between the force and the r. Uh, sorry, the force and the um, and the center, basically the point at which it's rotating about. Now, there's one final bit that I need to to point out to you. Is that think about if I instead of pushing um, on the door handle uh, the way I have it drawn here, what if instead I pushed on the door handle this way? What would happen? Well, nothing, right? You wouldn't. Um, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. There wouldn't be any change at all. And so it turns out that it's not important for you just to have a force, but the force, the only force we're interested in is the perpendicular force, the force that's perpendicular to the R. So if you see that, so whenever you push on a handle, you're pushing perpendicular to the R, the R being that R2 that I drew. Um, and if you have, if you pour, if you um, somehow push at some angle, let's say, all right, if I put a force like that, the only part of it that ends up mattering, it turns out, is this F perpendicular. 
Okay, this is kind of similar to what we had with when we were doing work, but in work, if you remember, it was the force parallel times the distance moving. In this case, it's the force perpendicular times the distance between the place that we're rotating about and the force. Um, it turns out the equivalent statement is that it's the force times the distance times the sine of the angle between them. And if I if I take um, if I just take this this example that we have right here. And, and kind of move it down over here. Um, if if F2 is going in this way, oops, sorry, F2, that's the F2 that I've drawn above. And if the R is going this way, this is, uh, um, uh, and let's, let's move it over so that they're tail to tail, which is the way it makes sense. So if this is R2, then it's this angle here, which of course is, is 90 degrees. If I take um, let's let's call this um, f uh, let's call this f um, three. If I look at this this new uh, this other force I drew, which kind of goes like this, then um, and r was like this still this is still r two. Then it would be this angle right here, okay? And so you see that we basically take um, f three r two sine of theta. Oops. And that would give us that component. So that's how you get basically the value of torque. Uh, I hope that makes sense. That's basically the whole thing that we need to understand about torque. It's basically this: the force perpendicular times r, and it basically tells you how anything, um, uh, how how we get anything to start spinning. Um, another great example, if you want to do another thing after this video is over. Go and find anything that turns, uh, some any kind of wheels, uh, any kind of basically anything that you have that that turns in a circle, um, a lazy susan, uh, a um, uh, a bicycle wheel. Let's do a, let's I can draw a bicycle wheel. But take a bicycle wheel. All right, here's a bicycle wheel. Let's see, uh, extend my. All right, there are the spokes. Um, and try to turn it by pushing on a spoke. Uh, by pushing on one of the spokes very close to the center and very far away from the center. And again, what you'll find, because because the torque that you need is the same in both cases to get it moving, um, if you're far away, so if your R is big, like in this, in the, in, in this, um, you know, if, if R is big, which is true here, you know, then your F perpendicular can be small. All right. Um, the alternative is that if your R is small, then your force perpendicular must be big. So this would need to have a big force that you would push with, and this would just need a smaller force to basically turn it in the same way. And that's the basic idea of torque. And that's all we really need to know about torque um, in the equation, and everything else is gonna fall out. So I think that's about all I wanna say about that. Please come with uh, questions in class, and maybe we'll do a couple conceptual questions to make sure we understand it. Uh, but um, that's basically all you need. Uh, now, if you'd like to, you can go and look at our um, uh, what we're gonna be doing uh, with our um, uh, our statics equations, which is kind of our, are going to be our first application for this.